Hello everyone, I am Professor Mallika Junaute. Today we are dealing with the topic Shear Stresses in Beams. So initially we will have an introduction about shear stresses in beams. In case of bending of beams, the beam subjected to constant bending moment only and no shear force. And as there is no shear force, no shear stresses that we have considered in case of bending of beams. But in actual practice, when the beam is loaded, it is subjected to a bending moment and that bending moment varies from section to section and hence it is subjected to a shear force which also varies from section to section. Due to these shear forces, the beam is subjected to a transverse shear stresses which produces complementary horizontal shear stresses. These shear stresses acts along the longitudinal layers of the beam means the shear stresses are acting along the length of the beam and effect of shear stresses is negligible as compared to the bending stresses. And in this topic we will see the distribution of shear stresses across the various sections of beams like circular section, rectangular section, I section, T section etc. Now we will see the derivation of shear stress equation and for that reason we have considered a figure okay, which shows the longitudinal section of the beam means this is a section along its length. Okay. So here consider a small portion ABCD of length delta X of a beam subjected to UDL as shown in figure A. So see here this is small portion of the beam ABCD. So there is an entire beam which is having longer length but we have selected or we have considered only a small portion having length delta X and this beam is subjected to a UDL. UDL stands for uniformly distributed load. We know that when the beam is subjected to a UDL, the shear force and bending moment varies from section to section. Okay, That we have seen in the shear force and bending moment diagrams that whenever a beam is subjected to UDL, the shear force and bending moment varies from section to section. So, we will see let S is equal to shear force at section AB. So, here S is the value of shear force acting along section AB. It is acting in the upward direction. And S plus delta S is the shear force at section CD. So, here you can see S plus delta S. It is acting along section CD. But it is acting in the downward direction. Right. So, S plus delta S means what? Slight addition in the shear force S. Okay. So, S plus delta S is the shear force acting on phase CD in the downward direction. So again M you can see here M is the bending moment at section AB in this figure you can see the bending moment M is acting along section AB and M plus delta M is the bending moment at section CD. M plus delta M is the bending moment at section CD. So see here M plus delta M means what a slight addition in the bending moment on section CD. And both are acting in the opposite directions. Now you can see here figure B. Figure B shows the cross section of the beam. Okay, it is showing the cross section of the beam. Means what? Initially, the beam is like this. This is the longitudinal section, which we can see from the front side. And here you can see the cross section. Right. So this is the section, longitudinal section. So I will say here it is having width dx. So it is having a length dx and width b. And we are going to consider a small strip here. Right means it is subjected to the bending stresses like this sigma 1 and sigma 2 along this section. Right. So we are having two views one from this side and another from this side. So just now we are dealing with this figure B means from this side. 
Okay. So we have seen the figure B. So what we are doing, we are considering an elementary strip of thickness delta y at a distance y from the neutral axis. So see here, we have considered an elementary strip. This is an elementary strip and it is having thickness dy. So you can see here in this side view as well as in the front view. Okay, of, this is a strip having thickness delta y and this strip is at a distance y from the neutral axis. Okay. So here I will say B is the width of the elementary strip. Delta A is the cross sectional area of the strip and if at all I want to calculate so it will be B into the thickness delta Y. So that is nothing but the cross sectional area of the strip B into delta Y. So see here sigma 1. What is sigma 1? Sigma 1 is the bending stress on strip across section AB. So in this figure we can see sigma 1 is the bending stress acting on strip my friends and it is across section AB. So similarly I can say that sigma 2 is a bending stress acting on this particular strip across section CD. So using relation already we have seen this equation in case of bending stresses in beams that is flexible equation m by i is equal to sigma divided by y therefore sigma 1 is equal to means this sigma 1 stress acting across ab on this elementary strip sigma 1 is equal to m by i into y so similarly i can do it for sigma 2 sigma 2 is equal to what you can see here sigma 1 m was the bending moment acting along ab for sigma 1. So similarly for sigma 2 m plus delta m is the bending moment acting across the section CD. So m plus delta m divided by i into 1 and f1 we are going to say f1 is what force acting on strip across section AB due to sigma 1. So I will say due to this sigma 1 the force is acting on this strip but across AB and F2 will be the force acting along strip CD or acting along section CD on the strip due to sigma 2. So F1 and F2 are the forces acting on AB and CD due to stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 on this particular strip section. We know that force is the product of stress into area because stress is equal to force upon area. Therefore, force is equal to stress into area. So, first I will find out the value of F1. F1 is the product of stress into area. Stress is sigma 1. Area of the strip is the delta A. So, sigma 1. Sigma 1 I can replace here like this. Sigma 1 is what? M by I into Y. So, we have replaced this value. Sigma 1 M by I into Y. And delta is as it is. And similarly, I'll do it for sigma 2. Sorry, F2. F2 is equal to sigma 2 into delta A. So, what is the value of sigma 2? Sigma 2 is m plus delta m divided by i into y. So, that same thing we have replaced here into delta is as it is. So, here F1 and F2, there is a very slight variation in the values of forces. Okay, because there is here is m by i and it, here it is m plus delta m by i. So there is only slight variation and due to this slight variation in the force there is an unbalanced force which is present. So net unbalanced force acting on this particular strip that we have to calculate and that is given by F is equal to F2 divided by F1. So we will just keep the value of F2 here and we will keep the value of F1 here and we will see what happens. So F2 is equal to same value f2 is what m plus delta m by i into y into delta a so this value we have kept here f2 minus f1 f1 is what m by i into y into delta a okay so f2 minus f1 so after simplifying the equation mm will get cancelled and only remaining parameter is delta m by i into y into delta a so this is nothing but the value of unbalanced force which is acting on this particular strip 
So same value I have written here. I have written the equation f is equal to delta m by i into y into delta a. Now, see here instead of a small area delta a of the strip, what we are going to do? We are going to consider an entire area a. Okay. Last time what we have done? We have just considered small area of the strip. But other than that, we are going to consider here the entire area A above Y distance from the neutral axis, okay, which is shown in figure C. And we are interested in finding out the force acting on this particular area A that we have to find out. So, okay, so if at all I want to show here, I can show uh, like this. In short, we are saying that. So, this will be the distance y bar. Okay. And here we have to consider this particular entire area other than considering a small strip. Okay. So, that they have mentioned here. So, instead of considering a small area delta A of the strip, we will consider if we will consider the entire area A above the strip. We will consider the entire area A. See this area A. If at all we will consider of the strip. Then the force acting on this particular area A is given by the equation. F is equal to delta M by I will be as it is. So rather than taking delta A, what we are taking? Then taking delta A, we are taking A. A is what? Entire area A above the layer Y. And rather than take, writing Y, we are writing here Y bar. Okay. So what is Y bar? If you will see in this figure, Y bar is nothing but the distance of CG of area A from the neutral axis. Right. So where F is equal to delta M by I into A into Y bar. So A is equal to area of section above Y distance from the neutral axis. So see here, this is the area of the section and Y bar is the distance of CG of area A from the neutral axis. So therefore, the shear stress on a layer Y, shear stress on a layer Y distance from the neutral axis is given by, so we are finding out the shear stress on this particular layer. And this layer is at a distance of y from the neutral axis. It is given by tau is equal to force upon area and this force f divided by as area as stands for shearing area. So if you'll see in this figure, so you can see the section line. So this is nothing but the shearing area because this unbalanced force f is acting in this direction, and due to that, the area which is present above the y, okay, that will move on the left top corner. Of the screen so that there will be shearing happen in this particular area and this shearing area is given by b into dx it is a product of b width into dx means length of the strip this here f force force just now we have seen delta m by i into a into y bar that i have written in the numerator and as is nothing but b into dx b into dx so i will just rearrange the equation tau is equal to delta m by delta x multiplied by a into y bar divided by b into i and we know that delta m by delta x is nothing but the shear force s so therefore delta m by delta x is replaced by s a y bar upon i b tau is equal to s a y bar upon i b so where delta m by delta x is equal to shear force so this equation we have seen in the shear force and bending moment diagram so tau is equal to S A Y bar upon I B. So this equation is known as shear stress equation. Where tau, tau is the shear stress on a layer Y distance from the neutral axis. Okay. So we have calculated the value of shear stress on a layer. And this layer is at a distance Y from the neutral axis. Unit is Newton per mm square. Then S is the shear force acting at this particular section. Unit is Newton, this S. A is the area of the section above Y distance from the neutral axis. You can see here, A is the area. Unit is mm square. Y bar, you can see here Y bar. Y bar is the distance of CG of area A from the neutral axis. 
unit is mm a y bar is called as a moment area moment of area a about neutral axis a into y bar so its unit is mm cube and b is the width of the section at a y distance from the neutral axis so see here b is the width of this section and this section is at a distance y from the neutral axis and here the width is b and i is nothing but moment of inertia of entire section about the neutral axis so this is nothing but the shear stress equation for beams thank you